the other industry that has been badly hit has been the wedding industry. The emergence of the Omicron variant and the resurgence of stringent pandemic curbs like limited number of guests, night curfews, etc. have brought back a sour sense of deja vu for this industry. The Indian wedding industry, one of the largest in the world, is now seeing a shift because of this pandemic. We ask several wedding photographers and those involved in the wedding industry themselves, we talk to them about what this pandemic has been like for the wedding world. We also ask them how has this pandemic affected the big fat Indian wedding after all. Joining me right now is one of Delhi's most famous photographers, especially for his emotional shoots that he does really at Indian weddings. Karan Sidhu joins me right now from his office in Gurgaon at the basement, a lovely office here. I can see all your artwork and of course your own um, photographs that I can see of brides and grooms over here. Uh, I'm excited to chat with you about how the wedding industry has really been affected because of this pandemic. But I also want to begin by asking you, what has 2021 been like for you, for, for the wedding world? The uh, downsizing of weddings has been a blessing, actually, because, uh, uh, I mean, the big, big Indian fat weddings that we've, we still shot, uh, that has its own charm. But the intimate weddings are really, really, really pure and uh, emotional. We've shot some really, really amazing, uh, very, very small weddings. Uh, be it, you know, there was a wedding that we shot with just 12 people at home. The bride's mandap was set up in the, in the front yard. Uh, the most beautiful part of that wedding was when the bride walked down the aisle, which was her, actually the porch. Uh, her help, her staff, her drivers, you know, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that. They held the full each other. And I, think, I thought that was just beautiful. Okay. People who want large weddings will always have large weddings, will wait for the pandemic to, over, uh, to get over and have weddings. Uh, but people who would uh, typically want a smaller wedding, but given the society in, the, you know, in, the, in their yeah. environment, yeah. They, they don't have the op, uh, you know, option of having a small intimate wedding, mm. are actually able to do that now. Mm. So it's, it's worked out better for some, uh, some couples who always wanted uh, an intimate wedding. So, you know, it's, it's been both. Uh, well, apart from the usual wearing masks and, you know, getting uh, COVID tested before and after the wedding uh, for the service providers and the guests. The, the other thing that it's done in the wedding industry space is the uncertainty that it, it has brought, it, uh, brought with itself. Uh, you can sit and plan a wedding, but you don't know if that wedding and that is, will happen or not. So, you know, uh, we've had to put clauses where uh, if, you know, we put a, we've put a clause that in case your wedding gets, in case there's a lockdown and your wedding gets, has to be moved, you know, and if we are available for that date, those dates, we'll shoot the wedding. If we're not, we'll refund the advance. The, the couples are now saying that, you know, we are not, you know, we, we are, our parents are not going to spend so much money. And that, which is a great thing, but now at least let's uh, let us get a good photographer because our wedding, the world will, our friends and family, extended friends and family will see our wedding through those photos and videos. Mm -hmm. So it's taken our work, in fact, and you know, it's 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 gone up. It's gone up. It's gone up. Right. Yeah. What we do is we go and document what you give us. Mm -hmm. So if it's a ten people wedding, we'll come and document that for you. If it's a one thousand people wedding, we'll come and document that for you. So for us, nothing really changes. Uh, of course, the weddings shift and weddings downsize and weddings move. Uh, so logistics, of course, change. Uh, some weddings get postponed. Some people say, OK, forget it. We'll just go, go ahead and do a 20 people wedding, which is also beautiful. So uh, and then they have a bigger party later on and then they call everyone. I think similar to uh, the COVID waves, um, the wedding industry in India has seen different uh, waves over the last one and a half years. So I think up till um, November or December last year was absolutely dead. So there was no work, you know, there was no planning. There was literally not much for any of us to do. Um, moving on to Jan, when it really picked up again. So we saw a lot of uh, influx in people planning their weddings. I would say there was still about half or one third of what it used to be. Um, I do know a lot of businesses were gravely impacted. Uh, luckily, we survived and we were we had enough business to keep us, you know, going. Um, but once again, uh, we move into April, and uh, the second wave came about, which um, ruined plans for a lot of people. Uh, by 
October by September actually I'd say people were done with it you know so the minute people got their second uh, dose of vaccine they sort of felt like nothing can affect them anymore and so we really like up till now we saw weddings going back to what they used to be so wedding seasons in India are from October to March right um, so the last uh, wedding season which was October 2020 to March 21 April 21 I'd say um, we saw 30 percent of the business um, roughly of what would have really been otherwise and like I said just when I was about to pick up with uh, April, May you know even summer weddings the number of summer weddings we've seen this year uh, I don't think we've seen in a long long time uh, because people were just desperate to you know get it done with I think last year people were hopeful that uh, 2021 will be better but now that they saw that there's really no respite you don't know when or how things will get better people just went ahead um, this wedding season, October 21 to uh, April 22, I'd say we were close to 80% uh, back. Some of the things that we have uh, tried out on, uh, you know, um, requests from the client are creating cubes, like glass cubes for the grandparents, where they sit within um, and then they're still able to be a part of the gathering and, uh, you know, be a part of the whole celebration. Um, then of course uh, I think something that everyone is doing is getting everyone tested so there's RT-PCR tests and then rapid tests on arrival um, checking uh, COVID vaccine uh, situation status certificates. yeah certificates yeah. but honestly so we're a very practical practical company right we don't believe in doing unnecessary things that are just going to cause wastage of money I think the people it really affected was the labor class so when I talk about the labor class, I mean in the decor teams, you know, the tent wallas, the pool wallas who literally live on this, right? Like uh, they used to have double shift, uh, double two shifts of work per day back in the day pre-COVID. Now they had nothing for six to seven months. Um, I in fact had a few of them reach out to us, you know, people who been, we've been working with for the past uh, seven, eight years. I had a few of them reach out to us for help and uh, we did whatever we could. But it is the daily uh, you know, uh, wage laborers who got the most impacted. I think there were some businesses that shut down as well in terms of uh, decorators, in, st in terms of some smaller caterers who just started off. I think um, honestly I don't want to speak about something that I have limited knowledge about but there are two things that come to my mind. One would be to give some sort of a warning or a you know, warning period before um, uh, implicating or like putting down lockdowns or curbs because for example we have a wedding in a week and we still don't know what to expect right we still don't know what might like what bomb might drop on us uh, post uh, January 1st 